Step 2. Photo detection with beam splitters. In this step, we're going to consider the problem of calculating the photo detection signals at the output modes 3 and 4 of a single beam splitter. And to make things simple, we're going to consider uh, a single photon in output 1. So there is nothing coming from output 2. So, how do we model this situation? We know how our uh, beam splitter matrix S transforms uh, our input modes A1 into modes A3 and A4. So let's consider the following model of our situation. Now, just to check that things are OK, we're going to compute the commutation relation of output uh, 3. So we can substitute for A3 and A3 dagger. And what we get is the following, R squared times the commutator of A1 and A1 dagger. We know that this commutator is 1. So the commutator of A3 with A3 dagger is equal to R, R squared, the probability of getting reflected at the beam splitter. So immediately we see that something is wrong with our model of the beam splitter. Why? Because this commutator has to be equal to 1. Otherwise, it's not a physical beam splitter. So what did, where did we go wrong? Let's retrace our steps. And the main thing is that we completely omitted the output input mode 2. In quantum mechanics, vacuum plays a role. So even if we have a single, uh, single photon at the input 1, we still need to model the output 2, uh, sorry, the input 2. How do we do that? We have to rewrite our transformation uh, relations for A3 and A4 in terms of A1 and A2. So what we do is we include the input mode 2 and we set it to state 0 meaning the vacuum. So the correct form is the following. It's written over here where we have the vector of A3 and A4 times our beam slitter matrix S applied to the input modes A1 and A2. And now we can check that all the modes, whether they are input or output, satisfy the correct commutation relation. Good, so now let's place our detectors at output mode 3 and output mode 4. How do we compute the, um, the photo detection signals? We just apply the usual formula that we talked about in the previous lesson. So our input is given by the following. We've got a tensor product of one photon in mode one and vacuum in mode two. And we are looking to compute the photo detection signal W1 at position R3 and time T. So we know how to do that. We have our uh, field operator E3 describing our mode 3 and applied to the state of the mode, psi out. And we need to take the modulus squared and multiply by the sensitivity of the detector S. The only problem is that we are not quite sure yet. We don't know how to compute this psi out. Luckily, there is a very simple relationship between the input and the output. So we can write any any expectation value at the input of any operator as the expectation value of the input operator with respect to the input state. And we know the input state and we also know the input operators. So let's go ahead and do that. Then we get that W1 is equal to S times one photon amplitude squared and then we have modulus of this following expression. We've got, we've got R3 here which we can rewrite in terms of A1 and A2, sorry, A3, which we rewrite as R times A1 plus T plus times A2, applied to our input. Now, our uh, input of mode 2 is vacuum. Therefore, operating on it with A2 gives us 0. So this term cancels. And all we are left with is A1 acting on a one photon state in mode 1, meaning that our W1 is equal to S times R squared times the one photon amplitude squared. And the total probability of detecting a photon at detector 3 is then given in terms of the quantum efficiency as P3 is equal to eta times the reflection coefficient R squared. And we can do the same thing for our detector 4, but this time we, uh, we have to substitute for A4 in terms of A1 and A2. And we use the same input state, and what we get is the photo detection signal W1 at position R4 is equal to the following, S times T squared times the one photon amplitude squared, which we can write as the total probability being 
eta, the quantum efficiency of the detector, times the probability that the photon is transmitted through the beam splitter. Now, we ask the same question as we did in the last lesson. What's the probability of a double detection event at the same time? In other words, a coincidence count, where both detectors D3 and D4 give us a click. And we know how to do that. So we use the same formula that we explained in the previous lesson. So the photo detection signal W2 for a coincidence event is given by the following. We have S squared, we are assuming same sensitivity for both the detectors, and then we've got the, um, our uh, output uh, operators E3 and E4 applied to Psi out, which we rewrite in terms of the input state and also the input operators. And after substitution, we get the following, following expression. So we have to think what happens when all of these operators act on our input state. Notice again, the mode 2 is in input 0, it's in vacuum, and we've got all of these A2s acting on the vacuum. So three of these four terms over here will cancel. Well, they'll not cancel, they'll vanish. They'll be equal to zero. So the only term um, that survives is the term A1 squared applied to our input state. And we know what happens when we apply A uh, twice to a single photon state. The first A will bring it back to vacuum, where the second application of A will destroy that vacuum. It will give us the number zero. So the photodetection signal W2 for a coincidence count is also equal to zero. And that makes sense. We cannot split a single photon. Either the photon gets reflected, with, and in that case it gets detected by detector D3, or it gets transmitted and it gets detected at D4. It cannot split, so there is no probability that we will get a coincidence detection at D3 and D4 at the same time. 